Uh, hello everyone. So in the last episode, we were able to make use of uh, React Bootstrap to design our navbar and our forms here to register and log in the user. Now in this episode, I want us to check at Context API and then we will see how we can make use of Context API to manage our form inputs here. And then after that, we'll go ahead and make a HTTP request to register a user. So to get started with, I have a simple example here of why we might need the uh, context API. So context API will allow us to create an auth context and this auth context will be containing our user data. And the reason why we make use of context API is so that we can be able to use this data in any other component that we want to without having to pass props through our component tree. So for example, if we wanted to make use of the user data inside our chat room, all we will need to do is to make access to the uh, auth context. We get the data from there and use it in our chat room. Uh, else, if we weren't having a global uh, state management system like context API or Redux, what we will do is that we will be having a user right here at the top level and then we will pass that user down the component tree up to where we need to make use of it. And this is usually a tedious process to keep track of all the components that we need to pass through up to the uh, final point here. And also it produces these other components where we are not actually making use of that data. So the main reason why we are making use of the context API is so that we can be able to share the data globally. And uh, that way it's much easier and uh, straightforward. So in order to use this data, we'll also be creating this op context provider component and we will wrap our app with it. And then after that, we can be able to access the user uh, from our context API. So let's just uh, dive right in. And this is how we can create of context in our application. So in client, make sure you are in SLC, create a new folder and I'll say context. Uh, in this folder, let's create a new file called of context uh, .jsx. And right here we can import uh, a function called create context from react and then make use of that function to create our context. So right here, we will import create a context for, and this will come from React. And then now we can create our context and actually also export it. So let's export our of context. So this is just a, like a variable. You can name it anything that you want. Of context make more sense. So we'll say export const actually of context to be equal to our create context right here, but we make sure to call it. Now right here we have created an of context, but still we don't have the data that we need to share uh, throughout our application. So to begin with, I can use a simple example of the user. So right here what we usually do is to create another component and this component is called the provider component containing our data. So right here, I'll say of uh, context provider. Again, you can call this, uh, this particular component any other name that you want, but this makes more sense. And then I'll set this to be equal to an arrow function, just like this. Like any other component, we need to return something. So let's return. And whatever we will return is a component pro provided by this of context object. So right here I can say uh, of context dot provider. And I uh, call it like that or I include it like that. And now in here we are supposed to pass all other components uh, that will be making use of our of context data. And to get those components, we will be getting them through props right here. So we will be having children prop. And this children prop uh, simply means the components that are the child of this particular component. Okay. So I'll show you where we will include this component. 
and now right here we should pass that children like this okay now uh, how do we pass data to this child components uh, we can include uh, some piece of state here so let's bring in use state from react use state and now right here we can create a piece of state let's uh, call this state user so we'll say let user and here set user a function to update our user be equal to use state use state we invoke that and we can pass an initial value of user let it be an object with the name as charles so this is just an example we are not yet getting this user this is just an example okay so let's imagine we have a user state and the default is having name as charles here so how we pass this is by using the value block which we pass to this auth context provider uh, component so i say value and we set this to be equal to um, we'll set it to be an object right here so we set an object and the object that we will include here is uh, our user so i set it to be an object so that we can extract multiple values from here so we will be having other stuff that we can be able to add here okay so for now let's do it like this so we are including the value plop we are using the first these curly brackets to get out of jsx and then now we are including an object and passing our data in there okay i hope it makes sense now how do we get these children components uh, if we have the children components uh, then we need to have the parent and this is the parent so to make this the parent we will go to main.js and we will import that particular component and wrap our app with it so right here i'll include all a context provider and i wrap the app with it like that and when i save uh, now this app becomes uh, the child and it will be inside our props and it will be inside now here we are wrapping it with this particular provider which is coming from here okay so you can see the way they are linking each other the more you use it uh, the more you'll understand so just follow along try to understand what is going on and you'll get it now this value will now be accessible in our child components and the child now it's up but remember app curly is other components like chat login register meaning that we can also access that user in these other components so how can we access that user in register so how we can do that is to go to the to the register component and we will import the use context hook from react so uh at the top level makes more sense to import it here i'll bring in the use context hook so use context like that from react and then now right here i can call it i can say use context i invoke it but what we pass in here is our of context which we created in our uh, of context.js file so here we have of context we are exporting it so that is what we are supposed to include in here so right here we should have of context we click on it to auto import it here it's coming in and we use it here so what this will return is uh, the data that is in our value so it will give us uh, this information here so we can extract the user from this particular object like this so we can say const uh, we extract user and we set this to be equal to use context of context now we have this user in our register file and we can try to view it so if i come here duplicate this uh, heading alt shift bottom arrow we can say let us see our user dot name and uh, if i happen to save this and go to our application uh, you'll see we have charles and we accessed that using the context api which is really nice and now we can be able to access this user uh, from any other component from login from uh, navbar and so on so this is one of the main reason why we make use of the uh, context api so that we can be able to easily access a uh, shared data globally okay and in this case a uh, user is a perfect example 
So we will be doing something like this for user, okay? So this user should be coming from the database. And the first step to do to get that user is that uh, we should be able to register a user using our register form here. And then we should also be able to log in. So let's see how we can be able to manage this uh, register user form data. So that is this form data here using context API. And then after that, we will be able to make a HTTP request to the database to save that user in the database. So this is what I will do. Uh, we don't need to bring in this user. So I'll just remove this one and I'll also remove this H2. Let me first save that file. I'll go into all the context and we will create a piece of state for our uh, form information. So uh, in this case, we'll be having user here as null. So let's remove this one. This was just an example. And we say the user here is null. Cool. Now, right here, let us create another piece of state for our form information. And I'll say const. I will include this square bracket. And then we will have register info. And then we will have set register info like that. And we will be setting this using the use state hook. So use state. And initially, we can set the initial value to be an object. We will be having the name as null or empty string. Then we will be having the email as empty, so empty string. And also we'll be having the password as an empty string. We should just pass this register info right here. So right here, I'll pass register. And now from our register form, we will be able to access it using the use context here. So right here, we'll say const. We can extract a register info. And these now will come from our context API. So use context. And I invoke these, I say of uh, context. Now register info is not enough for us to update our form data. So we should also find a way of bringing in our set register info. So right here, actually this is info, sorry, I save. Now, how we, we, we pass this set register info, you can pass it directly here, but it's good to wrap it with the use callback hook because use callback hook uh, is used to cache functions and uh, uh, optimize them uh, generally, okay? So right here, uh, what we will do is that we will create a new function const, we can say update a register info and we set this to be equal to the use callback hook. This will come from React. Again, this is used to uh, optimize the function uh, so that they are not called with every render. And now right here, we'll have info. So this info, now this is the data that we input in our form. Okay, sorry, that we input in our form here. So that is what I'm calling info. Let me close that because it's confusing me. And uh, so this is use callback, we pass info here. And this is a callback function that I want to create here using the arrow function. So I'll say uh, like this, okay? So the first parameter is a function. And with this function, I'm able to receive info. And right here, I'll use the square brackets. And this is now the array of dependencies. In case we wanted to run this function again, I would need to just include something here. For now, it will be empty. And what I'll do, I'll just call now this set register info right here. So I'll say set uh, register info. I call it like that. And I'll update our register info using this info that is already updated. So info. Now we can pass this function update register info uh, through our provider. So I'll say update register info like that I save and I can go to register and I'll be able to get it from there like this. So update uh, register info. Okay. 
Now, how do we update our state using register info and update our register info? We just need to come to this form control and right here we will be firing an on change event. So whenever we type there is a change that is happening. So we will be firing this on change event and we set it to be equal to these curly brackets. We will pass an arrow function here uh, which have access to the event object. And now we can make this use of this event object to update our state like this. So right here, we will call this update register info. So we will say update register info. Uh, we invoke it and right here, we pass an object. And now this object is the one that will be received right here as info. Okay. So this is our update register info. That object that we are passing is the one that will be received here as info and we will use it to update our state. So right here, we pass that object and what we should do is that we should correctly update the state. So we should not mess up with the previous state. So I will spread all the other state, which is this one, register info. So I will spread it, register info. And then I will just update the name and the name we will set it to be E, which is our event here, our event object. And we have access to dot target and dot value, which is our current value of the input. So I'll save this and this is what we have. This is how we are updating our input right there. And we can test it and see if it's working. So uh, what I'll do in of context here. I can actually log this register info to the console. So uh, maybe right here, I can say console uh, dot log our uh, register info. And here we say register info. So I save. Now I come here, I inspect and we should be seeing uh, something on the console which is our register info uh, it's showing an object with the nothing so let's go ahead and update the name to charles so we'll say charles and now you'll see that now our register info is having email name as charles password as password as empty so it's working okay it's working and we are making use of the context api so one of the reason why I'm using context API in this case is because uh, one for you to practice how to use it. The other one, uh, it makes this register file or component to be more clean as you can see. And the other reason is because we will be needing this register info to actually send it to the database in this particular file so I can still use it here. Now the question is, can you still use uh, the use state here to manage the state locally? The answer is yes, uh, there is no problem with that because this data is not actually needed globally. Let's complete right here register. All we need to do is to call this on change event on this other form controls. So I'll do it for email. Here we will just update the email and I do it for password. Here we will just update the password. I save and we can test that out. Okay. And I think we have an issue. Okay. It's gone. We can test it out. I come to this. Uh, right now we were updating only the name. Let's try to update the email. Uh, hey, email is updated password. Okay. And if we come here, you'll see now our register info is having everything. Cool. Now the next thing that remains is to actually call our backend and register a user. So we'll see how we can do that in the next episode.